Daughter-in-laws ask me how to set boundaries with their mother-in-laws. How can I stop my mother-in-law from body shaming me? What do I do when my mother-in-law smokes in the car with my child? How do you deal with a mother-in-law who invites herself to everything? And the comment section is filled with one question. Where the heck are the husbands? Today, we're diving deep into why some husbands struggle with setting boundaries with their moms. I've got real life stories and some techniques that I use in couples therapy that you can try at home. So get ready for a value packed episode today. Oh, and make sure you grab your how to set healthy boundaries guide in the description below. Okay, let's dive in. Picture this. It's a Friday night. Emma has planned a cozy evening in with her husband, Alex. They've just settled into their couch all cozied up. They're scooping up that first handful of buttery popcorn and the doorbell rings. It's Alex's mom showing up again unannounced. Alex jumps up. Hi, mom. Welcomes her with open arms as if this is not a reoccurring fight in their marriage. And then there's poor Emma just sitting alone on the couch. Her Friday night plans shattered once again. Let me just ask, does that sound familiar to any of you? Like, have you ever felt like Emma where as soon as your husband's mom calls or texts or needs anything, you're just left in the dust like that? It's an incredibly helpless and I'm going to be honest, infuriating feeling because you're like, Oh my God, like I'm supposed to be the priority. I'm his number one. He says I am, but it sure as heck doesn't feel that way. My next question is, have you ever wondered why is it so hard for your husband to set boundaries with his family? Like how come he can't say no? Well, stay with me because we're gonna unpack it all today and trust me, you're not alone. So it turns out that a lot of men struggle with setting boundaries with their moms because of a little something called emotional incest. What is emotional incest? It sounds icky, right? Well, it kind of is. Emotional incest happens when a parent overly relies on the child for all of their emotional needs. It's super inappropriate. It creates an unhealthy closeness and dependency. It's, it makes it dang near impossible for the child to set boundaries later on in life, and they end up feeling responsible for their parents' happiness. A study done by Dr. Kenneth Adams, who is an expert on enmeshed relationships. He also has a book. It's something like Husbands Married to Their Mom. It's in the mail, so it's not here yet. Otherwise, I'd hold it up, but I'll put a link in the description. His study showed that up to 40% of the men in his private practice experience some form of emotional enmeshment with their moms. So again, this makes it hard for them or almost impossible for them to put their spouse ahead of their mom. Now, thanks to TikTok, we can actually see emotional incest happening in real time. Here's some extreme examples of what this looks like in the wild. That last little boy <laughs> just hits different. I'm having this existential crisis. Or I wouldn't be that mom, that toxic boy mom. He hits his sisters, he punches them. I'm like, maybe he's having a hard day. So when I think about my daughters getting married, I get excited, right? I think about their dresses, planning their weddings. When I think about my son's wedding, I want to cry. Aw, young love. I remember that feeling. My first boyfriend. That's his mom. Well, it's not his girlfriend, that's his mom. That is extremely sad. And when I see stuff like this, I wonder about the impact. Like what impact will this content have? Because it's basically validating unhealthy moms. Like will this mess up more men in future generations? Because more moms are just giving other unhealthy moms permission to get all their needs met from their children. And then I ask myself, well, would that have happened regardless? I don't know. Let's get back to talking about boundaries. Like, you know, I believe boundaries fix almost everything and they're vital for a healthy relationship. Relationship, but especially it's crucial for a marriage. Without boundaries, resentment will just keep stockpiling, trust will erode, and you will find yourself constantly fighting for respect and recognition. For Emma, and maybe you feel like this too, the lack of boundaries with the in-laws feels like there's a third person in the marriage, which if you put it that way, <laughs> 
feeling like there's another person in your marriage, that's going to cause a ton of pain, a ton of hurt, a ton of like conflict and strain. It's awful. And Emma's frustration eventually does turn into deep-seated resentment towards her mother-in-law. It's not about the inconvenience of her just showing up unannounced and just demanding all this time from her husband. It's not about that. It's about the feeling of not being valued or respected. And she's basically sidelined all the time in her own home. I mean, can you just imagine how hurtful this would be? So what can Emma or you do if you find yourself in a situation like this? Well, the first thing is, is Emma needs to find a way to get Alex to actually hear her. Like everything she's tried so far has put Alex in defensive mode. And she's tried everything. She's tried nice. She's tried tears. She's done passive aggressive remarks and they've done full blown fights. Nothing's worked. But I had one more suggestion. Goal is to communicate in a way that helps Alex see her side, but also shows that she understands his. It's about starting the conversation from his point of view first. So putting herself in his shoes and then starting to speak. So Emma could say something like, I know you love your mom and you want to make her happy. I understand this is really tough for you. So this shows Alex that Emma gets how hard this is for him. So with Alex's defenses low, he's going to feel seen and understood and he'll be more willing to hear what comes next. Now that we have Alex right where we want him, just ears wide open, Emma can continue and say, I have been really overwhelmed when your mom drops by unannounced. It makes me feel invisible, like our plans don't matter, and I just need to figure out a way to balance family time in our own personal time. Now to keep Alex's defensive low, like so he can continue to hear, Emma needs to validate what he's probably feeling in that moment by adding, I know this puts you in a tough spot because you feel like you're betraying your mom. But if we don't figure this out, it's going to continue to build resentment and it's not just affecting our marriage anymore. It's affecting my relationship with your mom and I don't want any of that tension. I love her too. Pause. If you have ever struggled to get your husband to hear you when you have asked him to to set boundaries with his family, did Emma's script sound different than what you've tried before? It might, it might not have. I'm just curious, let me know in the comments. Let's say all this flops and Alex still gets really defensive and struggles to hear Emma. I got some more tricks up my sleeve, but before we get into the therapeutic tools that you can try at home, let me welcome you to the Mind Your Boundary community. If you're interested in how boundaries can improve your life and strengthen relationships, hit that subscribe button and stick around. Okay, back to the therapy techniques that I teach couples in my practice that you can try at home. First, Emma could put Alex in her shoes. What this looks like is Alex really needs to imagine what what it would be like if Emma's family just showed up all the time without notice and impeded on his personal time. And the trick to this exercise is really slowing it down so that Alex really truly feels like a simulated experience, like feels what it would be like. So for example, let's say Alex just is sitting down to game with his friends. So he's just getting all in his like gaming chair and his headset and mic on and he's got his gaming snacks, you know how they all do it. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, my family's here. You know, you shut it down. You gotta like entertain my family. Uh, let's say Alex is in the middle of a project in the garage and he looks out the garage door and here comes Emma's family and they expect him to stop the project and come and entertain him. Let's say Alex has a work week from heck. Like it's just been one of those weeks. He finally gets the lawn mowed just in time for the game to about to start. He sits down, he's just waiting for the kickoff. He cracks open a cold one and ding dong, Emma's family's there and they're not really into football so you gotta shut that down so you can focus on them. So really walk him through all the scenarios where he would feel like, yeah, that would suck. That would suck to have your family show up all the time and just take away from my personal time. Another thing they could practice is active listening. So they would take turns speaking without interruption, making sure that the other person truly heard what they said before they responded. Some couples like to use a talking stick. You can use a remote, you can use a stuffed animal, a throw pillow, whatever to symbolize, it's my turn to talk, it's your turn to listen. And if you're wondering, well, how do I know if I truly understood what they're saying? All you do before you start your spiel is you give them feedback. So you feed back what they said to you. So Alex could say, so I hear you say that you're overwhelmed and you don't feel like you're my priority. Am I understanding you? Once Emma gives him the green light, yes, 
that's that's exactly what I'm saying. She then will pass him the stuffed animal, the remote, whatever it is, to Alex, and then it's his turn. While you're doing this exercise or this technique, you could also practice feeling validation. So as Alex is holding the talking stick, Emma can put on the detective hat and really try to put herself in Alex's shoes while he's telling the story and try to imagine what it would be like if she was Alex. So for example, let's say he says something like, what am I supposed to tell her? She gave me everything. She gave, she gave up her hopes and dreams and her own personal life to put me in the best schools and sports and just launch me into the world successfully. Now I have to tell her she can't come over to see her only child? Like what the heck, Emma? To which Emma could calmly reply, I get that you feel really indebted to all that your mom has done and all the sacrifices that she has made for you. Now when it's Emma's turn to talk and she's holding the talking stick or the pillow, whatever, she could say something like, I'm not trying to keep your mom away. I, I, like, I want her to come over. I just am looking for balance. If Alex is soaking this up and he's still calm, she could add, I'm not trying to punish your mom and I'm not trying to be mean. Once Emma and Alex, they get on the same page, now they can sit down and they can talk about boundaries. Like what boundaries do they need to support their marriage and the relationships around them? For example, they could agree that they'll first plan out date night and family time, they'll schedule that. And then when extended family or friends want to come over, that comes in second. Um, they could say that, they could also say no unplanned visits. And once they're on the same page, they have their boundaries laid out, their united front, they're going to both feel respected and valued. Emma and Alex could take it one step Further. They could make a boundary agreement. Then this, and this might sound super silly, but don't mock it until you try it. You can write down like these are the boundaries we agree upon that support our marriage, and they can post it up somewhere in their house just to represent their commitment to like just I guess their marriage and their respect for each other. If all else fails and they've tried all the tips and tricks and they still cannot hear each other or get on the same page, therapy can really help. It's a great resource to have a therapist be able to mediate, feedback things so that you can truly hear what your partner is trying to say or intending to say. They can provide you with tools to help you with boundary issues and so much more. One Reddit user said her husband struggled with having an enmeshed relationship with his mom that it almost broke their marriage. She described how her mother-in-law would call her husband multiple times a day. So she would demand his attention. She would make him guilty for wanting to spend time with his wife. I mean, I can't even imagine that. But every single time they would try to have a moment, her husband would get a call and get pulled away to talk to his mom. And so she tried all sorts of things, strategies, everything, but nothing really changed until they got into therapy. And the therapist was really able to just come in in a neutral third party sort of way, really objective, and really show the husband like how his behaviors were really impacted impacting the relationship. It's truly amazing what a neutral third party can do because they don't have any benefit. They're just objectively sharing their thoughts with you. And it definitely lands different than coming directly from a spouse because sometimes coming from a spouse, like a wife about the mother-in-law, it can make the husband feel like he has to protect his mom. So coming from a therapist, it sounds way different. Another listener told me that setting boundaries actually saved their marriage. They started doing weekly check-ins just to talk about any issues, which really improve their relationship. By having these regular chats, they were able to address and reinforce their boundaries continuously. It was just all about keeping the communication open and making sure both parties felt seen and understood. Oh, and I got this question from a listener whose husband uses her as a buffer for his toxic family. And here's what I think. I think it's crucial for your husband to know where you're coming from, to really kind of experience what this like, what it is like for you. So sitting him down and just expressing yourself. This is what it's like when you put me in the middle of it, but also you're not being forced to stay in the middle. So he can try to put you in the middle. So he can try to put you in a situation and use you as a buffer, but you also can choose whether or not you stay in that position. But when your husband starts to not use you as a buffer, I would use another technique, which a lot of us know from parenting, training dogs, but I would use positive reinforcement. So I would reinforce any time that he does a behavior that you want him to continue to do. And I would reinforce it in a way that I would pair it with his love language. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, I'll put the link in the description below, but go as a couple, take the five love languages quiz, and you will know what your pri primary love language is. However, I'm going to continue on as if you know what the five love languages are since it's so popular. Let's say your husband's 
like primary love language is physical touch. So he just loves to be just touched, hugged, maybe his butt slapped, whatever. It's not just about sexual touch, it's just physical touch. So what I would do if that was my husband is I would go up and I would give him a great big hug and I'd just be like, thank you so much for protecting me from this drama last night. Like that was amazing about, like that was amazing. I just love you so much. So I would pair it with his love language to really like cement it and drive it home. Let's say your partner's love language which is acts of service. In its winter time, I would scrape off all of his snow off his windshield or his car. Um, I would make him a lunch. I would take something off of his list to make his life easier. So I would pair it with his love language and like pair your thank you or appreciation, like the positive reinforcement with his love language, you'll get so much more bang for your buck. So while working on getting your husband on the same page, it's important for you to focus on what you can control. Personal boundaries. And remember a boundary is a promise you make to yourself that I will make this behavioral change to hold my line. And here are some things you can do in the meantime to respect your own needs. Set your own personal boundaries. So you yourself can set your own limits. So when Alex's mom shows up unexpectedly, Emma could say you two enjoy I'm not up for chatting I'm gonna go read my book but you guys have a good night and she can go and have some alone time next create a safe space that is designated just for you in your home and it's a spot that if you go to retreat because if you're not up for visitors and you're like I'm gonna go you know read my book you guys have a good evening like if you remove yourself that's also your husband's cue oh I don't let my mom like go look for her in the house like she's in her her safety like zone next you can limit your interactions. So if your husband is unwilling to set boundaries with his family, you can. If you think seeing them three times a week is too much, you can simply say, I am willing or I want to see your family once a week. I'm willing to do that, but the other times you'll have to just go by yourself. Next, seek support. So find a support group or an online community like the Mind Your Boundary community. Share your experiences and get advice from others in similar situations. This can provide the emotional support, practical tips, and just helpful insights like from both sides. And the last one is document incidences. So keep a journal and just write down every time a boundary is crossed. This can help you clearly communicate where the boundary issues are and it provides concrete examples when discussing boundaries. So for Emma, she got very creative. Not only did she use open communication, she opened a line of communication with her mother-in-law. She planned one-on-one -on -one time just with her mother-in-law. That way when her mother-in-law came over unannounced, it didn't always feel like she was skirting away from her, like she was trying to avoid her mother-in-law that just helped Emma feel better about it and she got to know her mother-in-law as a person and she really made her feel important like you are so important in our life she did all this while still minding her boundaries but over time something really special happened slowly her mother-in-law started to see Emma as an individual with her own wants and needs and so every so often very rarely but every so often Emma's mother-in-law would respect their time and when she did this Emma would praise her and and she paired it with her mother-in-law's love language, which was words of affirmation. After a while, through lots of ups and downs, Emma and Alex were able to get on the same page. Alex was able to see the value of setting some limits and boundaries with his mom, even though he still does struggle today to be perfect, but Emma wasn't looking for perfection. She just needed to be the priority, and most of the time, she feels like she is now. So they're thriving, and the unexpected relationship with the mother-in-law I just think is a cherry on the Sunday. So remember, setting boundaries is crucial for every relationship. Every relationship that's healthy has boundaries, but you cannot, you cannot have a healthy relationship without boundaries. It's impossible because if you don't have boundaries, resentment will keep stockpiling, the trust will erode, and your relationship will crumble. It is such a helpless and infuriating feeling, but remember you are not alone. I know that it seems like an endless battle, something that you may never win, but try the things that I've shared today. Make sure you download the free guide in the description below. It's very helpful. And if all else fails, get a therapist. Get a neutral third party on board to help you and your partner build a stronger marriage with healthier boundaries. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you learned one thing today, make sure you share it with a friend. Until next time, make sure you keep minding your boundaries. Bye.